Invest in your postdoc transformation. Welcome to the seasonal show for scientists leaping into business. In every sponsored episode, we are happy to recommend employers of choice for you. Make sure to check your readiness to leave out of science with us for free as linked in the show notes. For your career transition, we offer customized career transition e-courses and memberships also at graduate schools all over the world. Maybe yours too. And if your university isn't yet our customer, Enroll in your free email course for career transition made simple as linked in the show notes. I'm your host, Professor Dr. Eleanor Sui Winkles, with my team who is rooting for you. And let's build your postdoc transformation with this episode. From recession to resilience in your career journey with Dr. Rima Day. Learn from Dr. Rima Day, an engineer and career elevation coach in India, why upskilling and emotional intelligence is important not only for STEM professionals. For navigating job interviews and salary negotiations, she shares valuable insights, practical tips, and valuable career transition resources to help you jumpstart your career. Dr. Rima Day, I'm so happy to have you because, like I already said in the introduction, you and I resonate a lot on LinkedIn. And just by reading our posts, I think that we share the same values. And that's why I was so excited to have you on my show. You are an engineer in India, having a large community in LinkedIn. What are things that keep an engineer or STEM professional relevant? First of all, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity and platform to speak. And yes, as you said rightly, it's the values because of which I think we connected and we resonated so well. So coming back to your question, what are the two important things that would keep an engineer or a STEM professional relevant moving forward, right? Now, this is something I had talked about long back and I always keep iterating the same thing that the two things that keep STEM professionals or engineers relevant is number one, upskilling. You have to be constantly upskilling. Now, what does upskilling mean? Because this is the fourth industrial revolution. Every industrial revolution has impacted the way we worked, okay? And the fourth industrial revolution, prior to which COVID happened, changed a lot of things where there is remote work becoming more common among people, hybrid work becoming more common among people, and the use of AI tools, being literate with AI tools, no matter what area of work you are in, so those are the things that you have to upskill to make sure that you are relevant irrespective of what you are pursuing in your education or what degree you're getting. That's number one. And number two, the factor that keeps us relevant as humans is our emotional caution. So everything that connects us, everything that makes us believe that we belong to a community is our emotional caution and anything right now that differentiates us from the ai is our emotional caution now what does this emotional caution involve it involves self-awareness it involves self-management skills it involves empathy skills it involves managing your relationships because seldom at workplace you will be working alone this is one skill that you have to get really good at so that you can lead yourself and you can also lead the people around you in a way that they are influenced by you and also inspired by you. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for the ramping up because I'm a psychologist and the way that you also stress the importance of building relationship with people so that you can influence them and take them with you in the change and in the adaptation, upskilling, preparing for the future of work really is so well aligned with what I also teach my bachelor and master's students in industrial and occupational psychology, because they are not the engineers, but I always tell them that you have to work with engineers as well, because 
you have to have the domain expertise and that's why it's all dovetailing whatever you said right now. And once you have determined your readiness to leap and want to transition into business or industries, then you can enroll in your free email course with 10 actionable bingeable email lessons until you start your job in business. You'll get 10 emails like this. Number one, how to leap out of science. Number two, how to build your sustainable LinkedIn profile. Number three, how to read social media and network. Number four, how to research your favorite jobs and employers. Number five, how to do informational interviews to get insights. Number six, how to create your customized applications with ChatGPT. Number seven, how to prepare your thesis from a business point of view. Number eight, how to apply to your favorite employers. Number nine, how to choose the right job offer. Number 10, how to prepare for your new job. All right, I looked at your LinkedIn profile. I saw also a post that resonated a lot. It was about recession and it might be inspiring in nowadays times because the future for most of us PhDs who are leaping into business might be unsure. What was most inspiring in your point of view for your community? The post happened during the time when the fangs, you know, Facebook, Alphabet, and Netflix, that fan community of companies were laying off people randomly. And I, being a part of the last big recession, which was 2009, I had experienced it myself. I was jobless. And in that recession, let me tell you, I landed multiple jobs. Two of the most known companies, one was General Electric and one was Honeywell. Okay, so the inspiration behind that post, which kind of had so many impressions, was that even though it's recession, there's no reason to lose hope. Because while I was working at one of the companies during recession as an intern, I saw my team lead being sacked off. And she was no way less competent or less professional. No, you had no reasons, but you just had no space to accommodate people you had to let them go and you didn't have any solid reasons and once these people left the company i saw them making it to better places she moved countries into a higher role which was much more suited for what she was supposed to do okay so that was the inspiration that recession it will hurt you in the short run but in the long term if you think about it it might take you to better places that's what happened to me and that's what happened to people around me so that's the point of creating that post and in fact when i was digging into it harvard did some research and they also found that most of the professionals who were hit during recession by either losing their job or downgraded to a lower level all of them did better in the long run that really is encouraging for most of us because I can absolutely relate to that. I was also finishing 2008 and started a new job in IT. I needed the money. When you are flexible enough, when you are adaptive and you are resilient and open to change, I think that this is one of the best learning curves that you can have because you have to learn. You have to run with the flow and capitalize on whatever you have. You don't have many chances, but you have to take them all. And that's why it helps you shape your own personality and to shape your own growth mindset. Absolutely, Ellie. And on that note, because you said you have to capitalize on the limited resources that you have during recession, that's the reason you also get super duper focused. That's one reason that gets you to the place you want to be at. You start focusing on yourself and start focusing on the skills that you can build on. And that's one thing that you can focus on because that's in your control. Everything else during recession is not in your control. And did you know that we offer deep dive e-course workshops and memberships at graduate schools, maybe also at yours in the future? Ask your graduate school coordinator whether they want to book my services so that I can deliver them to you 24-7, 365 on your mobile device. And even better, if you get us paid, 
by your grad school, we will pay you 50% recurring sales commissions. So you will earn money with us as we help you and your PhD besties to transition into business. We can build a post of transformation together. Woohoo! That really is the perfect bridge to the next part of questions that I want to ask. So switching gears from the mindset and the attitude of how to tackle the challenges. And now we want to look at the operations. So I also saw on your website, also on LinkedIn, you're posting a lot about tactics in interviews. You are a LinkedIn pro. So how can a new PhD in STEM, in engineering or whatever, leaping into business, how can that person sort of like pimp up or power up the LinkedIn profile? Absolutely. Ellie, to your question, when it comes to powering up the LinkedIn profile, the very first question we need to ask ourselves is, why do I want to be on LinkedIn? Is it for business or is it for job? Is it for internship? So I have to be very clear over there because once I know that why am I here? I can align my profile accordingly. Okay. So once you get the answer to that, the next thing that you have to do is you have to work on your LinkedIn profile. Now, why you have to work on it? Because I say LinkedIn is your online office. So every time that you are wanting to work with a business or work with the company, the very first thing you go and do is Google about that company or Google about that business. And if whatever shows up in the search doesn't really impress you, then you have already made up your mind somewhere that this is not impressive enough. I don't want to work with this person. Okay, so you want to ensure over there that your LinkedIn profile is right, because if you Google yourself, the very first thing that's going to show up is your LinkedIn profile, whether you like it or not. And so what stops you from believing that the employers, the companies that you're wanting to get into are not looking for that, not looking for your profile and not searching you. So your profile better be a good one that impresses people, that makes people believe that this is the person who can provide solutions for the problems that I am encountering right now. I couldn't agree more. All right, now I have the best LinkedIn profile that I can do with my capabilities, with my skills and everything. Now, if I apply for a job, let's pretend that I'm already invited. What can I now expect in an interview? Is there anything that I can prepare, typical questions, or what do you think? Now, the good news here is that you have been invited because the recruiters or the hiring body thought that you are a qualified candidate who needs to be interviewed. So tell yourself that, that you are the candidate who is eligible for this post and starting from there, pep yourself up and now start the preparation. Now, when it comes to interview preparation, we have to understand here is a process where they are confirming your impression of the hires, which they picked up from your resume and LinkedIn. So when they got your resume, when they saw your LinkedIn profile, they must have picked up some vibes about this candidate. And that's the reason they decided to have you in the interview. Now, interview is another layer where you get to interact with these interviewers personally, where you have to show them that how you bring value to the table and how good are your soft skills, how good are your hard skills. And then you have to talk in terms of your transferable skills as well. Okay, so this is one thing, PhD community, people who are looking to undergo a career transition are missing out on. They're not aware of the transferable skills that they have. So this is one thing I would like the PhD STEM professionals to think about. From episode one and counting, I have proudly hosted all our postdoc transformation show episodes on Podbean. As a former IT strategy consultant, I have high requirements on my tech stack, and Podbean is my perfect fit for a podcast host. If you want to create your own individual podcast or one for, you know, internal upskilling and communications within a company, DM or email me Podbean so I can share my experience and consult you. You can also use 
my affiliate links for perks, launching your own podcast with Podbean. I built my poster transformation as a digital business, and I chose Active Campaign to be the centerpiece of all my services like email course, podcast newsletter, show notes, website, sales page, merch shop, forms, whatever it is, as needed. Active Campaign is a must have recommendation. I use it daily. If you want to create your own digital business with various lead magnets and funnel options, DM or email me Active Campaign so I can share my experience and consult you. You can also use my affiliate links for perks launching your own digital business. I'll just provide a quick example so that the community can relate to it better. Say you're applying for a research scientist role. Now you have to understand what does this research scientist do? This research scientist has to do extensive literature survey, has to do ex extensive landscaping to understand where the technology gap is, has to coordinate with the external and internal stakeholders, has to convince them why the proposed solution or the plan that they have come up with is a viable one. And then in the meantime, they also have to do the experiments, come up with a plan, which is kind of showing your problem solving skills and then coordinate with the team as well. So you see there's a mix of soft skills and there is the transferable skills like the literature survey you have been doing in your PhD. Then there are project management skills that are coming here. Although you have not been aware of the term during your PhD, but that's what you have been doing throughout your PhD. As an independent contributor, you have been managing your whole PhD by your own self, coordinating with people. So that's where the transferable skills comes in. And finally, the hard skills. Now, this research scientist may have to be adept at using some instruments relevant for getting the data or generating the data. Now, as a, you have to be acquainted with that instrument. In case if you're not, then what is the closest match of that instrument that you have used? Talk about that and how you can learn about it at the earliest. So these are things you have to be aware of how to talk in the interview so that even if you are not a direct fit, you know how to position yourself and show what value you bring to the table. We try to discount the skills we already have without realizing how valuable they are. So the discussion here is a testament to the fact that we need those skills and do not discount anything. Sit down, reflect back and think about the skills that you have developed in the past couple of years. Absolutely. And discounting and counting is the bridge to the next question. You also have something to say about salary negotiating and I would love to hear your own voice about that. Ellie, to keep it sweet and simple, I'll start with three simple tips that you can use in your salary negotiation. The number one is never be in any hurry to negotiate your salary. Okay. Now, negotiation is a power dynamics game. So you need to have a stand from which you can negotiate and that stand comes when the employers want you and nobody else and that happens when you make them like you more than they thought they would right so that likability comes throughout the hiring process and you gain that stand towards the end of the interview when the offer needs to be finalized. So that is when you negotiate your salary. And in the beginning, you always show that you're flexible to the salary negotiation part. Okay. The second thing, when you're going into salary negotiation, I share this with my community. Remember the three D's. Okay. Now the three D's is number one is the desire. Number two is the demand. And number three is the departure. So what are these three D's about? Desire. It is a salary that you wish you had, but you're still not comfortable talking about this. So make a note of that. Number two is your demand. Now, this is a salary that you can easily demand because you're so confident of the value that you bring to the table. And the number three is depart. Now, this is the salary below which you are not available for this role. So when you have these three pieces of the negotiation together, you will have so much clarity about what you want from this negotiation. And with that, let's move to your research. 
okay just like we do our research in our phd to be sure about what kind of results we are bringing forth whether they are valuable or not and how they contribute in the whole knowledge pool that is already there similarly when you do your research you are aware of the salary ranges for a particular role you have spoken to people in the industry that gives you so much confidence to negotiate your stand and negotiate your number so these are the three golden rules i keep sharing always and now it's time to thank company abc who sponsors this episode of the post of transformation show I would now be reading the company's answers to one of six bold questions so that you can choose to apply. For example, number one, describe your most valuable experts versus leaders in your company. Have they typically earned a doctor title? Number two, for which of your company roles or units do you encourage somebody with a doctor title to apply? Number three, how would you describe your organizational culture in which your most valuable experts and leaders thrive in? To nominate an employer of choice so that we can ask our informative bold questions, let us know via the click on the link. If you are a company representative, like in recruiting and employer branding, and now you want your company to be highlighted as an employer of choice for our audience, you can become a sponsor of a dedicated post of transformation show episode. Just click on the link in the show notes. And now back to the post of transformation episode. Oh, that really was eye-opening in the sense that you have sort of like the three lanes within you should navigate, desire, demand, and depart. And I think that is also giving you a good feeling of entering the negotiation so that you know yeah. you have to stand for yourself in the negotiations because no one else will. And then they will sort of like push you somewhere here or there, but you still have your numbers in mind and that will help you to be decisive and depart if needed and uh, ellie on that note i just wanted to add that negotiation is also show leadership skills you know it's very easy to not negotiate but it's very tough to negotiate you just don't have to negotiate your salary moving forward you'll have to negotiate with clients you'll have to negotiate with stakeholders where do you go then you cannot escape so this is a life skill that will help you throughout your life as well as your career absolutely agreed now i want to switch gears again and talk about your free and also your paid career transition resources so on your website i saw that you have sort of like the career mapping tool i saw that it's for stem is it only for stem tell me a little bit more about that okay ellie well it is for stem but it applies to everybody because the strategies across search remain almost the same there's not much difference and the free resources that are there on my website is firstly to understand why you are stuck in your job search okay why you're not landing the kind of offers that you're wanting to so it's a 10 question career mapping tool you can take that assessment so it will get you started and it will initiate you into thinking what are the things you need to work on primarily to elevate your job search process and the other tools that are available is how to make a stellar LinkedIn profile. So that's a PDF document that is available for free. And the third one is the negotiation part, which so many of us struggle with. And it's a fully laid out, wonderfully written PDF document as to how you can start your negotiation with a recruiter without losing your stand or without giving away your number right at the beginning. Hey, Postdoc Transformer, are you curious to ask professors, principal investigators, visiting scientists, postdocs, PhD students, and candidates some in-depth life and career guiding questions? But if it's cringe, so you end up not asking? Buy our Postdoc Transformation card game to have more fun and valuable insights in your journal club, lab, and mentoring meetings, lab rotations, during conferences, panels, and breaks at the Mensa. You'll get 10 intriguing mentoring questions per career level. So 10 for PhD students, 10 for postdocs, 10 for professors, 10 for parental scientists, underprivileged and underrepresented and underserved scientists. 
Check them out with our discount coupon on the Postdoc Transformation shop linked on postdoctransformation.com. That is exciting and I will surely look into the PDFs as well. How can I work with you? Is there anything that you can share with us? Absolutely, Ellie. I had this webinars through which I was getting students into my community earlier and this was more of a cohort based community. But right now I've gone into more one on one coaching sessions. So you can connect with me on LinkedIn and DM me on LinkedIn if you're interested. And there we can get on with you for a complimentary 30 minute session to understand where you are stuck and how can I get you unstuck. And if we find each other to be the right fit, then we can get started right there. The coaching session that I provide are a mix of e-courses and one on one coaching that happen parallelly. There are there are resources, there are templates that you will have for lifetime in addition to the one on one coaching that you will be having with me till you make the transition or the new job that you want to land. The one on one sessions will continue. In addition, you'll have a community of people that have benefited from these courses, which will help you to build a network which you might not have immediately to start with as a fresher PhD or as a STEM professional. Have you found this episode so far helpful for yourself? Well, maybe you can subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Popping, or wherever you get our show. And also share this episode with your PhD bestie because that would encourage us to help the underprivileged, underrepresented, and underserved early career scientists leaping into business. This would also ensure that you don't miss a future episode. Also, our subscription and listening numbers are key for finding the right sponsors for our show so that we can help you for free. And now back to the show. And I think what is also remarkable looking at your offer is that you have also an offer for freshers and also for leaders thinking, what's the next step in my career? So. With these words, I would love to end this. And is there anything that you want to share before we sign off? I want to share, you may be the best one with the best educational degree. You may have all the right skills and the right attitude. You may have a great performance history, yet you can fall prey to recession. You can fall prey to a bad boss. You can fall prey to a bad company culture those are things not in your control so if that happens then understand this is how the whole process is it's very cyclic there will be good and bad phases the only thing is to show up in whatever phase you are thank you for your time Rima and I hope that my listeners the poster transformers will also follow you on LinkedIn and connect with you because you have so much more to share and the first part of this episode we talked about your LinkedIn post that resonated most and I will make sure to link all of these in the show notes so that my listeners can also find them and dig deeper into that. I hope that they will also find your free career transition resources and also your paid career sources because I really think that we have great coaches on our show but we need to resonate with the one that really moves and inspires us. If you connect with Dr. Rima Day, please let her know and say hi from me. Thank you. Thank you, Ellie. Remember, you are a postdoc transformer. You are highly intelligent, well-educated, a bachelor, master, and maybe you have already your doctor under your belt, or you are a postdoc. You are internationally experienced, fluent in English, a leader and expert in your prior research field. You're resilient, brilliant in adaptation and problem solving. You are eager to bring in the transferable and monetizable skills needed in many companies to embrace the future and to become or remain an innovator in their markets. Do you want a transcript of our episode? And our episode sponsors answers to all six bold questions so that you can choose to apply. Do you want to nominate your potential employer of choice so that we can ask them our bold questions? For all of that, click on our links in our show notes and on our website, www.postdoctransformation.com. Remember, 
to check your readiness to leap out of science and to enroll in our free email course, Career Transition Made Simple. Thanks for your attention. I'm Professor Dr. Elna Zoe Winkers, the host of your seasonal postdoc transformation show. And if you happen to represent the grad school, please continue to listen. Have you ever wondered how to make your grad school stand out in the crowded landscape of academia? Do you aim to attract the best master students from all over the world to learn from and work with your professors so that your research remains globally recognized and well-funded? Do you wish to repel bad applications which aren't tailored towards your grad school's research profile? Now, let's talk about a powerful branding tool, podcasts. They're a game changer for higher education institutions. As a professor, active on TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, and a podcast host and producer of this postdoc transformation show, I'm here to encourage all the graduate school representatives to think beyond the conventional marketing mechanism. Instead of being one of many vendors at a time-limited grad school fair, why not create a podcast that showcases your grad school as the ultimate destination for the world's best master's students. Share inspiring and encouraging stories of your top PhD students, high profile alumni, your faculty, and the incredible opportunities your grad school offers. A podcast can be a window into your school's vibrant community, its cutting edge research and unique experiences. And in times of AI generated marketing material, a podcast with your academic leaders in real life is a very human and innovative way to attract prospective PhD students. You can inform them every day, everywhere, not just during the typical grad school application seasons. This would prepare your best candidates for the application. Even better, you can support and make your current PhD students and postdocs visible for the next career steps in academia or business. Remember, successful graduates elevate your grad school's reputation. So, if you are a university chancellor, grad school dean, speaker, consider this. By launching a podcast for your grad school, you can elevate your grad school's brand and tell aspiring scientists and employers what makes your grad school the best choice with scalable evergreen content. If you're interested, forward this to your marketing representative and get our list of 30 sample episode titles customizable for your grad school podcast and just enter an email address on my website www.postdoctransformation.com as linked in the show notes. As a seasoned professor and podcaster, I'm also happy to strategize about how you can launch your grad school podcast on Podbean, the podcast hosting platform we use for the Postdoc Transformation Show, supporting scientists leaping into business. Postdoc Transformation.